will sing it a lot more this weekend. Which one do I do? You this one? Okay. Um, and you'll learn it very well, I'm sure. But truly, education is about building for eternity. Thank you for playing. I appreciate that. Before our team leaves, we're going to do a little bit more of an introduction. We do have it on the screen. Excellent. Ministry. God does not live for himself, right? We want to tell you a little bit more about us. This is our team, and the three of us came from um, the United States, and the Boutes are missionaries here. Do you want to give a little introduction about yourselves? Anything you would like to share? All right. Um uh, we are from different places. Uh, Dr. Bute is from originally from the country of Panama in Central America. originally from Panama in Central America and I am originally from Mexico uh, it's also part of the co continent of America and uh, we met each other in the mission field working together for GAMAS that's similar to PAMAS that you have here Philippine Adventist Medical Avi Aviation Service I was serving in Guyana, that's why it stands GAMAS, Guyana Adventist Medical Aviation Service with uh, Pastor David Gates, as volunteers with Pastor David Gates, and of course HCBN and PAMAS here are under the same umbrella, uh, GMI, Gospel Ministries International. And uh, Dr. Bute was working at that time in VAMAS, which is Venezuela Adventist Medical Aviation Service. So through God's leading, we met each other uh, already in the mission field, in the medical field, and now in the family ministry field, it seems. <laughs> but uh, we are very happy to be here. We've lived in the United States. We were there serving in Uchi Pines. We know these lovely people here. We love them very much. They, we were working with them. My husband was working with them at the Lifestyle Center. And uh, from there, we came to the Philippines. The Lord sent us here to the Philippines, and we have been blessed to be here. It's a beautiful country. We've learned a lot, and we praise God for bringing us here. So may God bless you and lead you. And our ministry here is called God's Plan Ministry. Amen. Thank you. You don't have to stand up here anymore. We're, yes, but thank you so much. This is where the three of us live. You'll notice on the screen, um, this is the United States in the left-hand corner, and Alabama is where we currently live, and that's in the red there. And the picture on the right is where we live in connection with the Philippines. We traveled a long ways to come here, but we are thankful to be here with you and to share what God has shared with us. This is just a few pictures of the beauty around us, where we live. You have a lot of beautiful things here in the Philippines, and uh, God has planted his wonders all through the world. Where we work is a place called Yuchi Pines Institute, and uh, it was started about, what, 40 years ago mm -hmm. by Drs. Calvin and Agatha Thrash. And uh, it was for the purpose of educating people about medical missionary work and how to really help individuals. Do you want to talk any more about them, Mom? Their uh, printed material as well as uh, the seminars that especially Dr. Agatha did all over the world. Uh, her uh, lectures many times were taped. Uh, the information that 
from Yuchi Pines over the last 40 years has helped to save many, many, many souls. And I'm one of them, and uh, my daughter as well. Um, <clears throat> so we have personal testimonies as to uh, how practically uh, their literature, especially, like I said, and the demonstrations when their lifestyle counselors would come with uh, Dr. Agatha's uh, two of the churches and demonstrate the hydrotherapy. You're going to get some of these lectures. And, uh, and uh, as a mother sitting out in the audience, I was able to pick up enough, plus have the books step by step, giving me instruction on how to help my little ones when they had fevers and coughs. And instead of like my mother did, call the doctor or take me down and get a prescription, I was able to stay away from the doctors because I, I could treat my child naturally with these natural remedies. And uh, we saved a lot of money, a lot of pain, a lot of heartache, and uh, we're blessed. And uh, what happens when a parent treats their child with natural remedies is that they grow up natural medical missionaries. And, uh, and my daughter, has been, she hasn't been through the Yuchi Pine uh, Lifestyle Educator Counselor course, but she can help some of them because, um, you know, when you get book learning, you don't have experience. And so experience is a part of the learning. And um, so I just want you to know that the thrashes have blessed people worldwide and helped to educate, like um, Kimberly said, medical missionaries for Jesus. Doctors Calvin and Agatha were um, in the medical profession around 40 years ago and they saw a great need to do something different than what their practices entailed. They saw that people weren't really being changed. They would just come time and time again to them and they weren't being healed. They weren't really being healthy. They were just getting medication or what have you. And so they saw a need to educate the people on how to have a healthy lifestyle and so they established Uchi Pines Institute Dr. Calvin is no longer alive and Dr. Agatha is not working anymore, but truly we are thankful for the work that they started. Yuchi mm -hmm. Pines has um, a life, oh, here's a picture. This is the Boutte family. When we knew them, they worked at Yuchi Pines as well, and that's where we had the privilege of meeting them. And this was a picture that was taken before they left. You can see that the children have grown a little bit more since then. Yuchi Pines has a lifestyle center where guests come for 17 days at least. Uh, they come to a 17 day session and they learn how to change their lifestyles, how they can deal with whatever is ailing them and deal with it naturally and really get on God's plan for health. It also has a training program for medical missionaries. So people come from all over the world to be trained um, in natural uh, medicine, how to educate others about these natural remedies. And these are some of those who have come to be trained, as well as some of the staff that are there. And mom, what do you do exactly at Uchi Pines? <laughs> well, I'm thankful for my training at home being a mother. Uh, mother just about everything don't they <laughs> so when you go into ministry work you want to be a ready helper and uh, so I take care of guest housing so I uh, use hospitality and uh, those that come for short periods of time uh, we give them housing and I prepare their rooms and clean their rooms and so forth also I work at the payment window so I receive the payment uh, for people coming to the Lifestyle Center. I handle money and uh, do some accounting. Uh, that's one of my greatest weaknesses, so God is always placing me with money <laughs> so that I can learn more. And uh, also I teach. Uh, I teach true education classes. I teach san uh, the sanctuary and also primitive godliness. And I teach sewing. So um, I am the dean of women as well. And I'm sure I'm a still mother, and uh, anything else uh, that's needed to do, I do. 
Everyone is very thankful for her contribution. She also has established a family Sabbath school. And the materials that we shared with you in worship this morning are what we use in a family Sabbath school setting. So all through the week, the families are studying from what we call the family Bible lessons, where we have the nature lesson and the character quality and the Bible lesson combined. And then on Sabbath, we come together as families and single people who want to join the family, and we do a review. And this is our little classroom there where we're doing a family Sabbath school. And we'll talk more about that as the week progresses. I do many different things at Uchi Pines. My main department is working in the print shop. I manage the print shop. So all the things that have to do with printing, that comes through me. And uh, since I've been away, uh, we've been gone for a week now. And I keep uh, hearing from my friends wow, we didn't know how much you did until you left. <laughs> Everyone needs a flyer or a brochure or something printed. And so it's a very important part of a ministry, having that printed material. So I manage that. I also work closely with the president. Any just uh, things that he needs done, small tasks um, on the computer or with visas or what have you. And then I help in the education department. So it's very diverse, but it's a great blessing to be there. And Lydia LaJoel, what do you do at UT Pines? I've been at UG Pines now for about four and a half years, and actually Dr. Boutte was one of my teachers. I went through both of the courses, the Lifestyle Educator and the Lifestyle Counselor courses, and then I stayed and I worked um, uh, continuing about another year in the Lifestyle Center as a Lifestyle Counselor, where you work directly with the doctors and the guests to tailor a program for them and their health needs. And so after being there for some time, the other students were coming in and they needed more help, not as a lifestyle counselor, but they needed help in the administration office as well as medical records. So now I'm getting a new kind of education. I'm in the office and I'm um, learning how uh, to apply practically those organization type skills. And also I have the pleasure and privilege as you, they read in my little bio of teaching some classes, some high, um, herbology classes, which is one of my uh, greatest joys, is learning about God through nature, as well as some outreach classes like canvassing or just different um, things like also there's in, in any area where we are, any ministry should be doing ministry right around it to the souls that are right in its own vicinity. And so uh, I have the pleasure of going out and doing helping with Bible studies and learning about that as well. So um, Right now, what I am currently doing, I've been bounced around in the office quite a little bit, um, but I'm helping with admissions. So anyone who would like to come as a guest to the Lifestyle Center, I get to talk with them and share with them about the program and those sorts of things and prepare for their visit. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, and I don't know how much longer I'll be there, but I've enjoyed every bit of what I have learned while being there. Um, on the job training as well as in the classroom. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we're done with you. Thank you for sharing. Um, before coming to Uchi Pines, uh, my mother came to Uchi Pines four years ago, and I've been there just over three years. But before coming there, we worked at a, uh, a ministry called Sunlight Education Ministry. And we're going to be sharing you mostly what they had to offer because it changed our lives. And it's really been a blessing to us, and we want it to be a blessing to you as well. They have tools for training your families and training yourselves to be better fitted for service for God, truly what education is all about. We worked at Sunlight for um, just over seven years. And here we are in the picture um, with the director of Sunlight, Jeannie Cook, and her husband. And um, it, was, it was a great blessing to be there. Do you want to say anything about that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, once again, uh, working at a ministry, um, it's very, very uh, profitable, uh, meaning um, that you learn a lot. But I have to say that we learned the most about, not the most, but we learned so much of the practical experience in the home. I uh, received um, the sunlight material when my daughter Kim was about eight years old. Do we have any eight-year-olds here? <laughs> Some eight-year-olds? Okay, good. Well, Kim was about eight years old and I learned about the sunlight material 
and I got it. I uh, actually got the whole program. We're going to talk a little bit about the second grade to eighth grade program. And there was over 70 books there. And I wasn't overwhelmed. I was rather excited because I love learning. And um, yet, uh, as we began to go through it, I noticed something that I hadn't really taught my children, I have two children, to obey. <laughs> and uh, so we had to work on that uh, at eight years old. Is it easier or harder the older a child gets to teach them to obey? Harder. It's harder, that's right. So to teach my daughter this way, I um, had to really work on character, which that is what true education is all about character development. And so we did go through some of the Sunlight books uh, and then we had to close them up because I had to work on character issues. And then uh, once uh, Kimberly uh, was converted, then she dove into the material and she began to read herself and we talked about it as uh, she went along and uh, that's when it really was exciting. Um, so we got a lot of the training before going to Sunlight, and that helped us when we were in the ministry. I just wanted to bring out that point. So that's who we are, where we've come from a little bit, and you'll hear more as we go through this week. Do we have the materials? Where did Dr. Butte go? <laughs> okay, we're going to share with you a few of the resources that are available, the tools for your training. Yeah, that would be nice if I could have something, yeah. Okay, so here we have some of the materials. Um, I understand that there are DVDs coming, possibly. Yes, okay, excellent. So on the Sunlight Education website, there are a series of downloads that you can get, um, and these are resources. It's so important that you as parents are educated to train your families. Do children come with a manual when they're born? Not really. <laughs> but we have a manual, right? We know that our answers are found in God's Word. And that's where we want to go for our answers. And so the director of Sunlight, Jeannie Cook, she put together a school program and lots of materials to help educate parents on what their job is and how to train their children for the kingdom of heaven and to be fitted for this world. So I'm... This is really small here. Let me open this. I'm just going to go through and give you an overview of what's here so that you have an idea of what we're going to be talking about as we make reference to these materials. The first folder here, and mom, if you want to interject anything, you just go right ahead. I think you have a mic. I do. Yes. yes. Okay. All right, this first folder, it says Sunlight Completed 1 PDF. We have the catalog, and this is a road map and route. So let's say you have a child who is seven years old. You go, what am I gonna do with this one? So if you go to the road map and route, this new catalog here, it's gonna give you an outline of what to deal, what to do, what you can do with this age group and what you can cover. Um, if you have an older child, let's see if I can. Can you open them? Open it here. Yes, this is a good one. Oops. Well, maybe it'll open. Well, we'll see if it opens. But in here, um, yes, excellent. So this is what you would look at. And this uh, section is going to deal with children um, who are ages 9 to 15 years old. So let's say, who here is 9? 
We have a nine-year-old. Anyone between the ages of nine and 15? Excellent. So this is where you could go to see what you can learn in this age group, what materials are available. The thing that I want to bring out here is that from birth onward, this sunlight material teaches using the Bible as the main textbook. I heard Brother Boutte say that in some of our schools, the main, the main textbook is Harry Potter, which is spiritualism. Um, the Bible is the main textbook. It should be for Christians. And so uh, once again, we start here with a nine-year-old using, teaching them how to use the Bible as the main textbook. If you have the younger children, we have someone that has a curriculum that does the same thing, setting up that pattern of using the Bible as the main textbook. But many times children come into this program at older ages. So you start uh, where you are, what age you are at, and uh, so if you are nine years old, you start with this program, or 15, you'd start with this program. It's written multi-level, so uh, if you had three children, say nine, 10, and 12, they would all start with the same material. And uh, how beautiful that is to teach without having to have so many different books. But um, this material helps you to be able to go at different uh, levels. Uh, so just like the Bible, the Bible is actually written in fifth grade language, fifth grade. And how many people have a hard time understanding the Bible, fifth grade. So <clears throat> when we got the material though, um, I, uh, not being trained this way, uh, I didn't think I was a teacher, and in each of the books there's the teacher section and the student section, so I just opened up to the student section and I became a student right along with my daughter. And I taught that way, as though we were both learning. And I have to tell you that the material, the way that it's presented and using the Bible as the main textbook and the spiritual being the higher part of the education, it doesn't matter really what age you are, I believe this material is for us, whatever age we are. Scheduling is so important in your training and uh, here in the catalog it has a suggested daily schedule that you can adapt to your needs. So you rise at 5 a.m. for a child in this age group, and at 6 a.m. you have family worship, which is your Bible class with Father. How many of us in our education, let's say we went to a Christian school, and we went to school, we had a Bible class, and did we ever talk about God the rest of the day? Most of the time not. But we're told that um, God and His truth should be woven into every phase of our education. So here we have a Bible class, but then we're going to take that same Bible class and we're going to extend it throughout the whole day. At 7 we have breakfast, at 8 o'clock we have practical arts. And these are the domestic activities such as agriculture and industrial arts. We're going to talk more about that later on in this week. And uh, then at 10 o'clock we have the school lesson itself. And we'll show you um, what that entails. And then 12 o'clock is dinner preparation, and health class can be woven into this. So all through your day, you're learning. 1 o'clock, you have dinner, and then another practical arts at 2, or fine arts such as music or crafts. 5 is supper, and then 6 o'clock is family worship, and this could be your history class. Did you know that you can teach history from the Bible? It's one of the best ways to learn history and then seven o'clock is personal time with God and bed preparation and then eight o'clock you're in bed so that's a suggested daily schedule right here that you can adapt to your family and this is an outline of the different subjects in the second grade to eighth grade school program we have seven subjects so we go through in the academics health math music, nature, history, geography, and prophecy is grouped into one, language, and voice. And we'll talk more about oh, before those. Before you move <laughs> to the next slide. You, do you see how this is set up? 
this school program. What's in the center? The Bible, the Bible. And then all around it are those academic subjects. What does it remind you of, the way that it's set up? The tabernacle. When God was bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt, he set them up in the Sinai Desert floor neatly and in order. And he put what was most important in the center, the most important. And in this way, he was retraining them, re-educating them, bringing them out of Egypt. Does that sound like a similar uh, message for us today? Yes, the three angels' messages are what we are to do. We're to call people out of confusion out of Babylon and so this program is set up so that in the center of your family life is the Bible and the Bible theme for this program for second grade to eighth grade is the desire of ages so the children are learning about how Jesus learned in those first years of his life beautiful Jesus we want to bring Jesus and his life back into our families and into our education. There's so much in the catalog, we're not going to go through it all. But the next folder here is the 2 through 12. It's uh, really what we call the 2 through 8 school program. And in here you're going to have so many resources. Um, we were just talking about the seven academic subjects in this program. And here you have the different folders. You have the health books and the math books and so forth. If you go into that, then you'll have even more of your lessons. We have the first six lessons in this program ready for you. And then more are being worked on. We have a book here called The Casket. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Oh, I don't need it. What is a casket? A place for to place the dead, right? That's the definition that we understand today. And here in the Philippines, it seems to me that you understand that word the same as we do. Well, in the 1840s, when they used the term casket, it meant something different. How many of you know what a jewel box is? Where you put jewels? A box that you put special things. And so at that time, when it was referred to as a casket, that's what it's referred to, a special box. Well, there was a man named William Miller, and he had a dream. And it went something like this. And, and we have a coloring book, or sunlight does, and it goes through this dream. So the children, as you're going through the dream of William Miller, they'll be able to color the pictures. That's how we remember things, is by having an active participation in the learning process. So what ha I'll just give you briefly what happened in that dream. William Miller dreamed that there was a room. And in that room, in the center of the room, was this jewel box. And it was open, and the jewels were placed neatly and in order in this box. And one by one, people came into the room, and they'd go to that box, and they'd pick up a jewel. And then they'd just lay it down. And pretty soon, so many people had come in, and they'd taken the jewels out. There were jewels laying everywhere until the man with the dirt brush came in. And I love the way that you sweep here. Those brooms are wonderful. Well, the man with the dirt brush came in and he swept all the jewels up and he placed them back in the jewel box more perfectly than ever before. And they shone so brightly. And this represents spiritually, what do you think represents the jewel box? The Bible. The Bible. So when every day you come to home school, and you come to the Bible, you are taking out jewels, precious jewels. And how you handle those jewels is very important. You don't just learn a principle or learn a Bible principle and then just discard it. You lay it back in that 
box so that the next person who comes in they can take it out too as well so be careful how you use those things that you're learning from God's Word be careful because those are jewels and so the principles that you may be learning here be careful how you use them don't just throw them here and there because the man with the dirt brush represents Jesus. He's going to come in and he's going to clean everything up and he's going to place those jewels, those Bible principles back in the place that they belong and they will shine. God wants us to be his people, a people that are higher than any other people in knowledge of him. And it's those spiritual principles in his word that makes us the highest people. I'm not going to go through everything in this folder. We're going to talk more about it later in the week. But I just wanted to point out one more thing, which is the Desire of Ages. This program is all centered on the Desire of Ages. Let's see if I can click. There we go. And within here, we have study guides to go through that book. And we also have songbooks and CDs, or the, the tracks for you to make a CD. So I don't know about you, but I like to sing. And this is a great resource where you can actually play the songs or just sing along with the CD. And many times people, they don't um, find these in the downloads. So be sure to check that out. And all this material is free and you can share it with anyone and utilize it. So let's go back to the main folder over here. This folder, the next thing we have are some booklets. These are just some extra materials. Uh, these booklets talk about um, family and work, familiarity, and the greatest of these. So just more materials for you. The next folder here is the Family Bible Lessons. And we use the Family Bible Lesson in our worship this morning. So you have them here, and uh, there's more. There's it's. It's a three-year pro program, and this is just the first year in this folder, and then th there's more in the other folders as well. You have a first grade reader, um, a book on the hymn of love, which uh, goes through one of the greatest character qualities of all time. And then we have songbooks. Here we have uh, Behold He Cometh and Songs of the Redeemed, which is songbooks and also the, the vocal tracks um, for songs from the Bible on the second coming and what the redeemed will sing in heaven. How many of you have heard of Christ in Song, the, that old hymnal? I love that hymnal. There's over 900 hymns in there, and it was printed in a really small book, and you can hardly read the words sometimes. Well, Sunlight has reproduced that hymnal in large format, and it, it can be bound into four books, eight and a half by 11, and it's all here. And you can do a search uh, for hymns and so forth. It's very convenient. And then there's some other song books here. There's a, a book on song leading. I really like song leading, and so it teaches you the principles of conducting. So that's in the first download. Um, over here in Sunlight Completed, number 2A, there's some more booklets, some more family Bible lessons, um, music. Here we have the song leading book. It's actually in this folder, and also a series by Carol Torres on helping your child choose good music. Mm -hmm. It's so important that we help our children understand music principles because, you know, not all music is good, is it? We're actually told that Satan will use music as a snare in these last days. So we need to understand this. And here's a resource um, to help how, us. How many talks by Carol Torres? There's four. Four talks. That would be an excellent resource for you. And it's a presentation that is given for children, so it puts it in a simpler language and makes it easier to understand. We also have stories here, and these are presentations on teaching the different academic subjects from the Bible. These are all recordings here. So recordings on how to teach math from the Bible, how to teach history and geography, prophecy language. Excellent. Yes, these are resources for parents to educate themselves. 
And this folder, um, completed 2B, is the 10 principles of true education. You want to talk about that? Sure. How many of you feel like you know how to educate your own children? That's exactly right. Most people do not believe that they can educate their own children. And we're going to be talking uh, more about what true education is, the model school. Um, back in the Garden of Eden, the model school was the home, and the parents were the teachers. And what has happened? What has happened to the home? And uh, which was the school, it was the church as well. And um, <clears throat> then it came to Samuel's time, and when Samuel grew up, he's the one who started the schools of the prophets. And that was to help in the education of those who were to be the teachers in the church and, um, and it wasn't for everyone and still the home was to be the place where education took place and then we come up to the children of Israel and God bringing them out of Egypt and the parents once again were not equipped to teach their own children but how did God set them up around the sanctuary? in families, in families, because once again God was trying to bring the people coming out of Egypt back to the family and have the parents be the educators of the, the children, having that sanctuary as the industrial school. And how long were they in the wilderness? Forty years. Who went into the promised land? the children. Where were the parents? They didn't believe. Unbelief kept them out of the promised land. It's harder when you have been trained in the wrong system of education to turn around and then follow God's simple plan of education. So parents, if you have children I want to tell you it is your duty, your religious duty, to educate your children God's way. Do our Christian schools know how to do that? <laughs> After you go through this program and uh, continue to study, uh, you will compare, as I have done, compare God's plan of education with the world's plan of, or system of education, and you'll see that they're, they're going different directions. And that's where our children are going, if we continue in um, that uh, vein. So Sunlight has a program to teach you parents how to teach like Jesus taught. It's called the 10, how many of you have 10 fingers? How many of you have 10 toes? And these are to remind us to walk in God's 10 commandments, to work and be obedient in God's Ten Commandments. Reminders right here on our fingers, or on our hands, and on our feet to remind us of God's Ten Commandments. Well, we have ten principles of education in this course from Sunlight. And it used to sell for $150. It's free now. Uh, Kim and I were uh, at Sunlight for seven and a half years helping to put this material into the computer, into PDF form so that it could be free. Because printing material is pretty much going out. It's getting more and more expensive. It's hard to mail it throughout the world. That's one of the things that we did there as well. So now it's in a form where uh, there's, you know someone, if you don't have this technology, you know someone who could print the material for you. So you print what you need as you need it, and it's best to read from hard copy than from the computer. If you sit, which we have many times, many hours a day, to sometimes 10, 12 hours a day at the computer, your eyes start to go. So we need the hard copy, and um, so I, I would admonish you to print it, even if it's just one chapter at a time, 10 chapters to the 10 principles of true education. Print it as you go, do it with your family, do it with the church, do it with a group, but do it, even if no one else wants to. And uh, it'll change your life. 
the thing the other thing is with the 10 principal program I have through the years talked to teachers who have been through teaching programs and then they go through the 10 principal program and they say we never were taught this we never were taught this so you are going to be learning through the 10 principal program God's methods of teaching and God's plan for teaching and how to use the Bible as the main textbook and nature and academics are all part of it but you bring it all back to the Bible an excellent resource all right um, sunlight completed number three oh. Let's see what's in here we have some books for high school high school is a great age we have the cross in its uh, cross in its shadow study guide um, we'll talk more about what to do with the high school years, but here's some resources. Historical periods, it goes through the different periods of the world, according to the Bible. Here we have a study guide to go with patriarchs and prophets that you can incorporate in your high school class to learn true history. Um, Sunlight Completed number four has more family Bible lessons. And it looks like it's almost finishing up year two here. What I've done is I've compiled all of these folders and consolidated them so that it's not so many. You can do that as well. Here we have more lessons for the second grade to eighth grade school program. And if we go on to Sunlight Completed number five, we have more school lessons and books. Under books, we have Psalm 23 for children which is an early reader and the family Bible lessons to finish up year two health posters uh, some things that you can use in teaching health to your children and here we have the teaching series again looks like that's a duplicate let's go to number six which is the last one and these ones are not revised. The Family Bible Lessons is a three-year series, and um, we're still working, well, Sunlight is still working on revising year three. And so this one um, are just year three that's not revised. So this is the old format, but it's still, the material is still there. So that kind of gives you an overview of what's available so that you can educate yourself and your children. There's not a shortage of resources. It's just in utilizing them. Oh.